This is writing decimals on a standard grid answer sheet, lesson 9D. And of course, I've got links to my previous videos in case you get lost or confused. Just click in the description. So we talked about this when we were doing fractions. It's pretty much the same thing for decimals. This very, very top part here is where we would write in the amount. Okay? That's what this space up here is for. We actually would write in the amount. Okay? And since we're doing decimals, we're not going to use the slash marks. That was for answering fractions. We're actually going to fill in a decimal point in its own column. All right? So some problems on the GED test will have a standard grid for their own answer, just for that one problem. So you'll see this just for one problem, this entire thing, okay? So in this first one, here's no decimal. We just wrote in the whole number, 1,234. See, there's no commas. When there is a decimal in the answer, that decimal gets its own column. We would write in 123 and 4 tenths, see? So the decimal is always getting its own column, and we're filling in that dot circle. See that? For every single answer, no matter where the decimal is, it has to have its own column. So that's why writing it in up here can help you. Now, it says on the, on the instructions that you don't need to write it in, but my advice is write it in. Because what that's going to do is tell you, okay, I need to fill in the 1, I need to fill in the 2, the 3, the dot, the 4, and it's going to help your eyes. You don't want to have a silly mistake of filling in the dot and the four in the same column by accident and then getting it marked wrong. And that's the reason you failed the test for that one question. So you want to tiptoe and be as careful as you can when you're filling these out and give it its own column. So my advice, write in the top here. And then as you're filling in those circles, make sure that you're filling in the exact correct circle. Okay. One slight mistake could be you failing the GED test, all right? And this answer can begin in any column as long as there's room. So if your answer is two thousandths, which is 0 .002, you could start it here right up against this left side, or you could put it here and start it in the second column. My advice, start it in the first column, and then you leave that last one blank or Whichever one you didn't use, you just leave it blank. But my advice is to start with the first column. It'll just make it easier for you. Okay, start all your answers from that first column. All right. So here we have an example. Lisa bought a dozen donuts for $9.48. What is the price per donut? Well, that per is telling us we need to divide. We need to find the price of one donut. Okay. It means each. So we divide the $9. Whoops. This is $9.48 by 12. That'll give us the one donut price. If you have your calculator, you can just do this really quickly. 9.48 divided by 12. And then you can write in your answer, okay? If you don't have the calculator, just do $9.48 divided by 12 long division. And we put the decimal point straight up from where it is. And we just pretend it's not there as we're doing the division, we would say 12 goes into 94, because it can't go into 9, can it? So we'd say 12 goes into 94 how many times? A little multiplication on the side, 12 times 7 is 84, and that's as many times as it can go in, because 12 times 8, well, that's too many. So we do the 12 times 7, we get our 84, we get a 10 left over, it's the 8's turn to come down, 12 goes into 108, well, 12 times 9 is 108. So it turns out to be 79 cents for each donut. And we write it in the standard grid. We put our dot for our decimal point. And we fill in that circle and our 7 and our 9. Okay? Now, what is her cost for three dozen? Well, it was $9.48 for one dozen, so we're going to multiply it by three, aren't we? Remember? If it's in parentheses, that means multiply. So we do this. And if you've got your calculator, you can do it very quickly, 9.48 times 3, and then you write in your answer with the decimal point. If you don't, then just do your multiplication. You know how. You fan it out. You start with the 1's place, 3 times 8. You regroup the 2 up here. So when you do 3 times 4, you have to add that 2, right? So it's 14. And if there's 2 decimal hops in the equation, 1, 2, then there's 2 decimal hops in the product, 1, 2. 
two, we get $28.44. Now there's no dollar sign on the grid. So we've got 28.44, and that's how we fill it in. We fill in a two, an eight, the decimal point, the four and the four, and we fill in the two circle, the eight circle, the decimal point circle, and the four and the four. Don't forget that decimal point, okay? You don't want to make a mistake, and over a silly decimal point, you end up not passing the test, okay? So even if you pass the GED math test by one question, hey, you passed, okay? That's great, all right? So you should now be ready to do that skill focus on page 119. If you do well when you do the skill focus and you check with the answers in the back and you got them all right, well, great, keep moving forward. If you have trouble, then you need to go back and you need to watch videos 9A, 9B, and 9C where we talked about how to do these kinds of problems, okay? There'll also be links to my other videos on how to fill out these answer grids for whole numbers and fractions, and there'll be links to the grade 5 and grade 6 videos about word problems with decimals, okay? So I'm putting all this at your fingertips to help you so you don't feel like her, okay? And clear up any confusion. So good luck on the skill focus. Take your time. See how well you do. And I'll see you at the next lesson, okay? We're going to go on to lesson 10. And we're going to be talking about changing decimals to fractions in 10A, okay? Bye.